Can testosterone replacement therapy make you go from this to this? Hi, I'm Dr. Kühne. I'm a primary care doctor and I used to offer testosterone replacement therapy or TRT in my clinic. In this video, I will discuss who would benefit from testosterone replacement therapy and why especially younger men should think twice about starting TRT. At the end of the video, I will also provide eight tips to naturally increase your total and free testosterone. Now, I have stopped offering testosterone replacement therapy in my clinic for several reasons. One, you can now get testosterone replacement at many online clinics easily without regular follow-up and labs, and many people understandably are now going that route. I don't agree with this as there are several parameters that absolutely should be followed in my opinion. Another reason is that I personally am not on TRT, even though based on my labs, I would definitely qualify to do so. And I feel like a bit of a hypocrite if I offer something that I am not currently willing to use myself. That being said, there are many people that um, greatly benefit from TRT if they present with certain symptoms. And I believe that it is just overprescribed, especially in the younger population. Especially if younger men want to preserve fertility, they should consider whether starting TRT is worth the risk. So what are common symptoms of low testosterone? Well, there are non-specific ones that we can probably all identify with if we are, let's say, over 40. And those are fatigue, low energy, poor motivation, loss of muscle, and increase in fat. Now, if you have children, you can probably multiply those by 10. The more specific symptoms of low testosterone are decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, decreased bone mass, mood changes, anemia, and loss of body and facial hair. Now, if you have any of those in combination with low total and free testosterone on a lab test, then I would more likely agree that testosterone replacement therapy can be beneficial for you. So let's talk about labs. Most clinics simply look at a total testosterone, and this is very oversimplified in my opinion. We have to keep in mind that of the total testosterone, less than 2% are in the form of free or usable testosterone. The rest is bound <clears throat> by proteins, the most abundant one being sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG. So it depends greatly on how much of the total testosterone is usable at all. FSH and LH should also be checked to see if the low testosterone is a primary or secondary issue. Normal values for total testosterone are, and this varies slightly from lab to lab, 250 to 900 nanograms per deciliter, free testosterone, 30 to 170 picogram per milliliter, free percent, sorry, percent of free testosterone, 1 to 2.7%, sex hormone binding globulin, 19 to 78 nanomole per liter. In most cases, if you present to a clinic with a total testosterone under 400 nanograms per deciliter and you complain of any of the nonspecific symptoms, you are very likely to leave with a prescription for testosterone replacement therapy. I have found in my clinic, though, that these selection criteria do not make a lot of sense. I have seen patients with a total testosterone in the low 200s without any symptoms. They are able to maintain or gain muscle in the gym and do not have any sexual issues. And I usually ask about those in an interview. On the other end of, of the spectrum, I've seen people with a total testosterone in the high 800s that had several of the above symptoms. And one of the issues here is, of course, the free testosterone in these cases. If someone has a very high sex hormone binding globulin, then you can push the total testosterone to extremely high levels and still have <clears throat> a marginal free or usable testosterone. But even if the level of free testosterone is um, okay or in, in a good range, it's not always decisive. I have seen patients with low free testosterone that also did not have any symptoms and you know, uh, that would identify them really as a client to replace testosterone, right? Or that they would benefit from testosterone replacement therapy. And as one of my professors in medical school said uh, quite brilliantly, treat the symptom, not the lab value. I think that's very important. So why should we not put every man with a low total of free testosterone on TRT if it is advertised as so safe and amazing? Well, reason one is wrong expectations. Replacing testosterone to push someone toward the upper end of the reference range will not turn them into Arnold Schwarzenegger in his younger years. The person may gain <clears throat> a couple of pounds of muscle. They may lose a little bit of fat. But in many cases, the difference is not as significant as people would like it to be. So reason two 
there is a risk to fertility. And this, of course, is especially uh, an issue in younger men. When you are taking exogenous testosterone, your own production will decrease or stop completely, at least temporarily. With that, there will be testicular atrophy and decreased sperm count and often infertility. Most of the time, this can return to normal after the person stops TRT, but in some cases it does not. So there is a risk associated with TRT and uh, younger men that, you know, in, in younger men, this might permanently change their fertility actually, right? In the 1980s, research, researchers in Sweden explored the possibility of uh, birth control for men. <laughs> they came up with two strategies that worked fairly well. Number one, administer 100 milligrams of testosterone per week. And, and this is roughly the normal testosterone replacement dose, even though in my recommendation, it wouldn't be once a week, but it would be divided in uh, three smaller doses throughout the week. This decreased sperm count su uh, sufficiently in a large percentage of participants that birth control was actually achieved here. The second one was sitting in extremely hot water for 10 minutes daily. Now you can probably guess why. Also successful in a certain percentage of men. But since neither of these two solutions was sufficiently reliable, the researchers abandoned the project after a while. Now also keep in mind that when you stop testosterone replacement therapy, so let's say you go on this to just to try this out and see how you feel, there will be a period of several weeks to months where you will feel quite miserable as you are slowly recovering and making more of your own testosterone again. It takes time for that to happen. Now, this can be mitigated in some, to some extent with medications like Clomid and HCG. And um, <clears throat> while there is no known physical addiction to testosterone, like if we have with you know, addictive substances, there certainly is a psychological one when you go from feeling great, confident, to feeling weak, tired, lethargic for weeks on end after you stop taking it. So there is this uh, psychological component, certainly. So I would strongly recommend to explore non-pharmacologic ways to improve your testosterone before contemplating testosterone replacement therapy. Because once you go on it, this is sort of, in many cases, a permanent solution. And here are eight ways to significantly increase your natural production of testosterone. Number one, eat enough saturated fat, eggs, butter, meat, and so on. Don't go overboard here, as this could certainly lead to weight gain. You need um, saturated fats to make testosterone, right? This is one of the uh, backbones that you need. Two, reduce stress. I know easier said than done, of course. Number three, improve sleep. Also easier said than done. Seven to eight hours of good sleeps per night. Number four, lift heavy weights regularly. So make sure to avoid injuries and go for about 10 to 12 clean reps max four days a week and do high intensity interval training regularly about three days a week. You know, it doesn't have to be too long, 20, 30 minutes. Number five, look into supplements like boron, zinc, magnesium, vitamin D3, and talk to your primary care doctor first before starting any of those. And remember, taking too much boron specifically can lead to toxicity. Number six, decrease body fat. Number seven, decrease alcohol intake. And number eight, decrease xenoestrogens, which are, you know, estrogen mimicking chemicals from plastics. So do not drink from that plastic bottle that's been baking in your car or heat your food in plastic dishes, in other words, right? Now, following these steps can greatly increase your total and free testosterone as well as lower your sex hormone binding globulin. And this is especially where boron comes in. Now, I did another video where I explore some of these strategies. It's going to be linked right here. And um, this could be greatly beneficial. So I'd explore all these things first. Keep in mind that there are risks to taking testosterone. I think it's overpromised. And then, you know, again, especially with the fertility risks are quite real. And it depends on when you stop it at some point, uh, if and how well someone discovers um, after stopping testosterone replacement. These are very important things to consider before jumping onto it. The clinics, of course, want to get you in. So they go with very simple parameters and they want to get you as a client and hopefully as a long time or lifelong client. That's very understandable, of course, because that's how they make money. But again, keep in mind that um, this is a very important uh, thing to consider. Think of all the parameters that can go wrong and also have realistic expectations going in. Besides that, optimizing your own testosterone first will be beneficial even if ultimately you do decide to go on testosterone replacement therapy because the more prepared you are and the, and the better in shape you are, the better your results will be once you go on testosterone replacement therapy. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please um, subscribe and leave a comment or question. 
I will discuss these and it's greatly helping, you know, to um, help other people understand some of these issues as we explore questions and also gives me ideas for future videos.